Let me take you back to the 1600s in old Ireland and a story of a farmer and his wife and the work that he did from his farm to grow vegetables and fruit and things of this sort and deliver them into the nearby village. And at this particular time, this farmer was was so upset because there were highwaymen all the way into the village. And, and he had produced vegetables and other things and sold them to the merchant in town. And the merchant was holding money for him to come and pick them up. And so he said to his wife, I must go into the village. I've got to get the money that we need for seed and for food for the fall and winter. And his wife said, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't go into the village and risk your life. What will happen if one of the robbers of the highwaymen takes you and, and, and then kills you? What will I do? There's nothing I can do without you. And the farmer said, but I, I need to go, my love. Otherwise, we just simply won't have the money that we need. What should we do? And then while he was talking to his wife, there was a very, very low voice coming to them and said, I could go. And the farmer and his wife looked around, and there was this little nine-year-old boy who was part of the work group there at the farm, and he was a wee lad. And the farmer looked at him, and he said, Oh, you're so brave, but of course you can't go. You're just a little boy. And the little boy, the wee feller, said, I can do it. If you would give me a gold crown, I would be able to go into town, and I know I could collect the money and bring it back and avoid that nasty old highwayman who everyone in the village area knew was a robber named Redman O'Hanlon. And Redman O'Hanlon was known not only to rob but unfortunately, many of the people he robbed never survived. So it was a very, very dangerous time. But the wee feller said, I know I can do it if you just let me. And the farmer looked at his wife and realized that perhaps this was the best way to get the money that he was owed, but also not to risk his own life. And so he said to the wee fella, he said, yes, I'll let you go and I will give you a gold crown if you bring back the money. And in addition to that, here, and he brought out this very, very big gun and he said, I want you to take this gun. Well, the wee feller looked at it and he said, I, I can't even lift this gun. No, don't give me that. I won't need that. Well, the farmer said, if we're not going to give you a gun, then we'll give you the fastest horse we have on the farm so that you can go like the wind and avoid the robbers. But the little wee feller said, oh, no, I don't want the fastest horse. He said, what, what I would like to take is old Bob. Well, the farmer said, old Bob. Bob, old Bob, is barely able to walk, much less run. But the wee fella said, yes, I think that that would be the right thing. Let me take old Bob, and I will go into the village, and I will get the money that is owed you. And so the farmer and his wife, they shook their heads, but they said, if you insist, we'll let you go. And so the farmer went out to the barn with the little feet wee fella, and, and he put the saddle on old Bob, and old Bob was just kind of looking around and trying to understand why somebody put a saddle on him. He hadn't had a saddle on him for a long time. But the farmer cinched up the saddle very strongly, and then he helped the wee fella get up on top of the, of the horse. And... And almost at once, the, the wee feller, he just kind of got on the horse and he got the reins and he turned his way towards the road and he began to ride to the village. Well, old Bob kind of clop, 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 
clop, clop, clop. He was really slow. Clop, clop, clop. And the little wee fella, you know, he looked at old Bob and he said, I know, Bob, you're doing the best you can and I know we're going to get to the village just fine. And as he went along, he came finally, oh, after ever such a long time, to a, a, a bend in the road and he came around the bend and, and there in front of them was, was a man on a big, black, beautiful horse. And, and, and the man had a leather, leather vest with gold buttons on it. And, and he had black leather pants and he had big, shiny black boots. And, and the horse had this beautiful silver saddle. And, and then that man had a big hat with a great big feather on it. And he came up to, to the wee feller and he said, hello there. Oh, it looks like you just kind of released yourself from your mama's apron strings. What are you doing out here by yourself? And, and the wee fella, he said, I'm just, I'm just riding into town to for an errand for, for, for my master. And, and, and I am a little afraid because I understand there are, there are robbers around. And so I'm going to try to avoid them if possible because I'm going to pick up the money that is owed my master and take it back to him. Well, the, the, the horseman said, never worry about that. I know there are robbers around, but I'll wait right here for you to come back, and I'll protect you from anybody that's trying to rob you. Well, the wee fella said, oh, okay, that's fine, not realizing that this was the famed Redmond O'Hanlon himself. Well... The wee fellow continued to ride in the town. And he finally came to the railing where he put the reins of the horse right in front of the merchant's shop. And he got off of the horse and he walked inside and said to the merchant, I'm, I'm here for my master. And I'm here to collect the money that is owe him. Well, the merchant looked at him and said, Why, well, you're just such a little feller. How come you're coming here? Because he said, my master was afraid that there were robbers. And I said to him that I could avoid the robbers and, and, and I get a gold crown if, if I'm back successfully. Well, the, the merchant was so amazed. He called his wife in. And he said, look at this young, brave boy. We need to make sure that he's going to be well fed before he heads back to the farm. And so the, the wife of the merchant brought out, oh, a big glass of buttermilk and, and, and one of those biscuits, big biscuits that she opened up and it was still warm and she slathered it with butter and then she put strawberry jam on. Well, the wee feller hadn't eaten something like that for a long time. And so he, he had the buttermilk first and he ate that biscuit and he was just stuffed and he was so thankful. And he said, well, I need to get back before it's dark. So if you could bring me the money, I'll be, I'll be on my way. Well, the merchant brought out a big bag and it was filled with gold coins and and the wee fellow looked at it, and he thought about it, and he thought about that feller out there waiting for him who was going to help him against the robber. But he said, you know, could you take one of those gold coins and, and change that into hay pennies? You know, and, and, and that would make a lot of hay pennies. 
uh, and their copper and, and, and put them in a separate bag for me. Well, the merchant said, I, I could do that. And so he went back into the back room and he came out with a bag of hay pennies and he gave it to the boy. And, and the boy then took both of the bags and he went out to the horse and he took the bag of hay pennies and he hung them right on the outside of the saddle on the horn. And he took the other bag of gold coins and he shoved them underneath the saddle where you couldn't see them. And then, then he crawled up on old Bob. <laughs> he said, old Bob, who realized he was going back to the farm where there was hay and oats, so he was eager to get going. Well, the wee feller turned around with old Bob and started back out of the village. And as he was going, he came around after a while to a bend in the road, and on the other side, there was a big man and a black horse with a mask over his face. And he looked at the wee feller and he said, your money or your life. Well, the wee feller looked at him and he realized that he recognized the big feather on the top of the hat, and he said, Oh, Mrs. Redmond O'Hanlon, I know it is. And he said, I'm not going to give you the money yourself. And he took the bag, and he threw it into the forest, and he said, If you want the money, you're going to have to go get it. Well, the robber, Redmond O'Hanlon, got off of his horse and he said, I'll go after that money, I'm not proud of that. So he left the horse and he started walking out into the woods. Well, the wee feller got off of old Bob and he pulled the bag of gold coins out from underneath his saddle and he ran over to that big, black, beautiful horse of Redmond O'Hanlon's. He scurried up on top of it and he put the bag of coins underneath the saddle and he raced off. Well, Redmond O'Hanlon came turning around. He said, what are you doing? Come back here, stop. Well, the wee feller wasn't about to stop and he rode that horse all the way back to the farm and the farmer saw him coming. He said, where did you get that horse? And the wee feller said, I tripped the robber, and here's the bag of gold coins that the merchant owed you. The farmer and his wife were amazed. And, and they took him down off of the horse, and they took the money and put it away. And and they said to we fella, you not only have earned this gold coin, but he said, we're going to sell this horse and we're going to give you that money so you can go to school and become educated. Well, that's the story of the wee fella. And you want to know what happened to Redmond O'Hanlon? Well, there he was on old Bob, and he was so embarrassed that a wee feller like the boy could trick him out of not only the money, but his horse. And everybody in the village laughed at him, and he skulked away and was never heard from again. And that's the story of Redmond O'Hanlon. And I'm Mike Forney from Spellbinders, and I love telling you stories.